a central banker, two party secretaries, a former football association chief. They were among the targets of a four-part anti-corruption documentary that aired on Chinese state-run television in December 2023. All confessed on primetime TV to graft, which eventually led to their downfall. The Post cannot confirm if these confessions were made under duress. Former Chinese central banker Fan Yifei fell from grace in September 2023. In the documentary, he confessed to accepting massive bribes since he became a top official of the People's Bank of China in 2015. I wanted to possess great power and at the same time to be rich. I made a huge mistake. The documentary series Continued Efforts Deepening Progress featured 12 corruption cases. It was part of efforts by China's top anti-corruption watchdog to showcase its work and set out priorities for the year ahead. They usually will, will run a long four or five episode uh, documentary to boast about their past year's uh, work. They will show to the whole nation what are the uh, most exemplary cases that they found in the most uh, focused anti-corruption cases. Among those profiled was Jilin City's former Communist Party secretary, Zhang Xiaopei. He's alleged to have accepted tens of millions of yuan in bribes through this billboard in the heart of Jilin, where local businessmen poured huge sums of money for renting it to funnel bribes to Zhang. The second one, uh, it has a very special angle that previously was not been regarded as a disciplinary offence, where some uh, local officials would like to use the public fund to build vanity projects. Li Taiyong allegedly allocated 21 billion US dollars to projects that went nowhere and left the city of Guiyang at risk of default. The documentary showed some of the 17 failed projects including this ski resort in China's southwestern province of Guizhou. He was uh, charged of spending billions of dollars on vanity projects, which, uh, although official account says that 17 of 27, 20, 23 projects did not work, but according to our, our, our knowledge, it all fumbled, it all failed. None of it actually pulled off, and he made his city, Liu Pan Shui, at that time he is the party secretary there, almost bankrupt. The documentary shows the former Guiyang party boss saying, I hoped to push some big plans and create a big bang so that I could attract the attention of my superiors. It was my own selfishness. The third episode was the episode that rocked the whole China about China's soccer corruption, where they arrested the former boss of uh, 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 China's sports administration and uh, China's football association and the China's former uh, coach of China's national team. And they exposed the whole chain of corruption. Former chairman of the Chinese Football Association, Chen Xuyan, is shown admitting corruption was rife in the sport. The corruption in Chinese football does not only exist in certain individual areas. It's everywhere, in each and every aspect. The football episode also included confessions of match-fixing and bribery from Li Tie, former head coach of the men's national team. Billions of dollars of investment went into grooming the national team for success after President Xi Jinping made it known he wanted China to become a leader in the sport. But the Chinese team was eliminated during the preliminary stage of the 2022 Qatar World Cup. Prior to that, some of the sport's top investors from the struggling property sector withdrew their support. It's one of the most important episodes that, that struck the heart of many, many mainland Chinese where they have been wondering why uh, a nation who put in so much money into their soccer development and all that, but they can't even like, make it in Asia. 
right? So um, this is one of the things that resonates with a lot of people. All these actually uh, confirmed many of the previous rumors about why some of the better team in China actually lost in critical games. And the way they lost is really out of nowhere. 这次足协这些高官被查的话，作为一个资深球迷来讲，还是比较心痛。嗯，因为没有看到过去十年、二十年中国足球得到一个发展，而还在走下坡路，所以这是作为球迷的最真实的心声吧。我觉得，呃，我